Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel here at the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society of America. Uh, I'm Ben Dietrich and I'm joined by Tom Smith. Tom, hey. Tom, you, Tom, you're becoming the YouTube superstar. A lot. Oh man, it's very scary stuff, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna <laughs> muddle through somehow. Uh, I think you, you've been requested by a lot of society members like they did to appear right. on YouTube. And this is funny because I mean- Get out of here. If everybody else, if you, you haven't known, Tom has once famously uh, rejected all forms of social media being sort of an old school, live in the present kind of <laughs> guy. Yeah. Uh, you're back. I mean, I don't know. It's, uh, it, it's, it, I'm just used to the in-person medium. That's all. But yeah. I'm warming up to this. I, I mean, I kind of have to, I guess, right? This is what we got these days. But uh, yeah, it's fun. And people are actually, actually requesting me. I mean, that's awesome, dude. Uh, cool. I'll be happy to do more. Just point me in the direction. Pour me some whiskey and... Uh, and we'll we'll be good to go. Well, listen, guys. And, today yeah. we have a. We're, I think we'll we'll put you to the test, Tom. Today, as you can tell by the the title of this video, of course, in the description <laughs> below, we have a pretty special uh, fair ahead of us. Yeah. Something that I think I let me just say this. I've probably been dreaming of this opportunity for. I mean, I've been with the society here, our team, for a few years now. But way before that, I've been always dreaming of the opportunity to taste through some of the rarest whiskeys that the society has to offer in one sitting, mind you, one sitting. Yeah, I mean, th th these are not whiskeys that we get to taste very often. Um, you know, we, we kind of see whiskeys like this come and go. Um, there are some bottlings that, we, you know, it's just, it's tough to pop a bottle because um, we want want them all for the members. But in this particular instance, um, you know, we had to twist our own arms and say, this is, you know, this is for the good of the the chapter so yeah. really what we're doing is an act of selflessness i think in pouring for absolutely breathtaking whiskeys and yeah. kind of lending our thoughts on it i mean somebody has to do it somebody has to do it i was just you know, that. it's might a, as well might as well be us so guys today we'll be doing as again as we're alluding to now we're going to be tasting through our entire selection of uh volts collection casks Entire selection, meaning not of all time, but just of what's available today. There are actually four. I think it's probably the first time we've ever had four available to members. You know, that is shop. true. Yeah. Oh, there is a beautiful empty box. <laughs> so um, what we'll do today is we're going to taste through all of these. I've only, I have to admit, a couple of them I've only noticed. I've tasted two of them. I've noticed a couple just before Tom and I were just, you know, chatting about them. So it'll be sort of the first experience for me of doing all four. And Tom, you said you, you've, you've, you're a bit familiar, a bit more familiar with these. Well, I did the unboxing. I did the right. unboxing for uh, 95.39. So that'll be interesting because uh, I opened that bottle. It was an unboxing. So I just popped and poured and, you know, it was a, a whiskey fresh out of the bottle after being trapped for, you know, uh, at least a, a year or so um, before it came to us. So now that there's been a little space created in the bottle I, I think it's it's definitely changed a bit since september so that's uh that's pretty interesting the others um i haven't tasted yet actually no no 24.139 we did a little uh soiree in um in new york last year yeah or i guess earlier this year um in late february where uh where we had a few members get together and we did pop open a bottle then but it's been you know since pre-COVID times, so yeah. you know a, a, a world ago at this point. Um, so uh, yeah, it'll be interesting to revisit that and uh, and see how see how that's doing. Yeah, I'm excited. Yeah. And so what we'll do today, guys, is, is we'll taste through all of them, you know, one at a time. We'll share our our, our thoughts on each whiskey. We hear a lot from members just asking, you know, what do they actually taste like? These are these are really the rarest casks in our of our warehouse. Um, and so the chance to taste them ahead of time is not always possible. Tom, you mentioned pre-COVID, we did you did a little event where we had some members get together and taste one of them that we'll have today. But but really, it's it's, it's not every day that you get to first of all taste any of these. Um, you, know, right. you see one unopened. And, you so, know, and our first one actually was just released. Um, when was it released? Last last month. So, you know, th this is my first time tasting this, and. Um, and maybe we can start there. Is that exactly yeah. what you do? Tom, you want to just, just fill us in. What What is going to, just the basics of the Vaults collection? Like, wh how, I mean, maybe we can go along and talk about that. But if you want to just to briefly introduce what the concept, what it is, how long it's been going on, because you were around when the first one came came out. That's right. Yeah. 
just just to give everybody an idea of what to expect and, and really how we go about choosing these. Yes. So the first Vaults collections were released in 2017. And, and this was something the society toyed with for a while. And they finally took the leap into this, you know, sort of like top echelon of, uh, of, of spirit line. Um, and, you know, over the years, they've been managing thousands and thousands of casks for decades. And, you know, as, as they're sort of figuring out which casks to release, which casks to let uh, stay in the, in, in the um, warehouse and mature a bit longer, you know, as they're nosing and tasting through, a few come up and, and are recognized as being very, very special casks. So um, over the years, they put a few more of these aside for, they, they weren't, I don't think they quite had the, the vaults collection you know, crystal clear idea in their in their head ten years ago, but they knew something like this would be the evolution of of what we offer. Um, so with that, you know, they, they kind of kept some casks to the side, let them co continue to age, and uh, and finally in 2017, um, the first were released. It was a, a it was a cask 20.25, and 24 point, oh, forgive me, I'm forgetting the number. Um, 24 point, wow. For everybody who's wondering if Tom has every society cast number memorized, <laughs> clearly you do not, my friend. That is yeah, 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 it was, uh, it was a while ago. 24, uh, one, two, four, maybe? There were a couple, there were a couple to kick it off, right? It was a lowland, I remember, and, and, uh, and then yeah, the side. 20 point two five is like in my noggin, that one for sure. No. Uh, that was a closed distillery, but the, forgive me, that, that 24 is just eluding me at the moment, which is a little embarrassing, but 24.127, I'm going to take a guess. I think, <laughs> was, I think that's what it was. I think it was the 127. Um, okay, cool, man. We're just going to embarrass ourselves with uh, these number guessing. It was awesome. So yeah. That's, you know, that, <laughs> that's the important thing. It was awesome and it lasted a second, uh, <laughs> but, uh, but you know, and, and these vaults collection casks, um, you know, that we only released a few a year, you know, maybe two or three a year for 2017, 2018, 2019. Um, and in 2020, as the members, I think, who have been with us for the year have seen, there's a, there's a bit more frequency in what we've been able to release. And, and that's, a, that's a result of the society basically pulling a few more of these casks that have been earmarked for, for a few years. So now you're seeing um, not just, uh, you know, more recognizable distilleries, but you're seeing closed distilleries as well as um, ones that maybe in their heyday were really meant for blending. But, you know, again, these are still beautiful single malts, oftentimes, you know, put into these larger blends and, and their, you know, their sort of uniqueness is, is kind of, thrown into ubiquity, but uh, but in any case, we, we have a chance to try one of those as well, actually two of those um, today. So yeah, um, so these are our, our oldest, rarest, most precious casks. Um, of course, our tasting panel decides which bottles get the, the vaults collection designation, which bottles get the black label or, or premium designation. Um, and, and the ones in the vaults collection box are are easily the most special we have. So it, I'm very pleased and, and uh, honored um, that you invited me here today to taste with you, Ben. So that's awesome, man. Shall we get rolling? I'm just using you for the whiskey. You know, it's, it's without hey, you. Because, you know, I mean, you know, I'm yeah. not very savvy with this stuff. So can you look up that 24 number, please? For we, me? we will. We'll have, we'll, have, uh, we'll have a, and, and comment below if you guys know before we get to it. <laughs> first, what we'll leave it to you guys watching. The first vaults collection released bottling released by the, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society was 24 point what? Comment below if you can comment before we reveal it. I don't know. You, you're, a, you're a noble society member. We'll just leave it at that. Uh, so <laughs> and I've got too many cast numbers in my head. Let's go but, ahead. Uh, this, one's, this one's right in front of me. So why don't we start here? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, let's show this. So All right. Go. So this is cask 65.6, um, history in a glass. It's a little out of focus, but I don't know. 30 years old. Can you get that? Oh, it's not me. I think it's... Okay. 
Yeah, well, anyway, uh, 30 years old. This spent all 30 years in a refill X bourbon barrel. And um, this is from the Speyside Spay. So we have a, a, a lovely, lovely expression that is now a closed distillery, a silent distillery. So we're starting off with a cask that probably represents, in my opinion, the most unique aspect of the vaults collection in that, I mean, there's a lot of, uh, you know, a lot of singularity in all of these casks that elevates them to this level, but this particular one no longer exists. So um, that's, uh, that's a chance to be able to try not only a single malt from a distillery that's no longer with us, but a single cask. And um, that's very, very rare to find. Um, this one in its heyday, saw a lot of its uh, malt put into, into different blends, um, but you very rarely got to see it in, in its single malt form even then. So this, as far as we understand, is one of the last casks around that, that is released from distillery number 65. And it was always, while, um, while it probably wasn't on collector's radars, there weren't a whole lot of collectors back in the 80s, um, it's recognized now that this um, distillery created malts of, of considerable texture. And I think, uh, I think we'll probably discover that in this, in this first dram. So this is history in a glass, cast 65.6, .6, and you have your information down below. Yeah, it's interesting. I just want to call it too. Mm -hmm. If you well, notice that obviously of the whiskeys we're, we're tasting today, all different sort of cast types, different regions, uh, three of them are in the old and dignified flavor profile. This one is sweet, fruity, and mellow. And just my first impression, again, before going to the other ones, is just how vibrant the fruity character is. Like it, it leaks. You know I mean, yeah, it really does. A lot of sort of, oh, I'm thinking like overripened stone fruits, like a peach, or almost like, or even sort of as it would be in like a peach pie. Right, sure. I mean, I'm I, I'm getting uh, kind of creamsicle-y type stuff, like, it's tropical. It's a lot of flowers, really frag fragrant, fragrant flowers. But the, the aromas, how, however you perceive them uh, when you're trying at home, uh, I mean, these aromas are literally leaping out of the glass. I, I like the Nowitzki. I know, listen, we all have different preferences as to sort of what part of the tasting experience triggers your excitement the most. For me, if I, if I know a whiskey, and it just jumps at you right away and sort of just captures your attention. I want to get to know it a bit more. You know what I mean? If I really Absolutely. dig into it and start looking for things just to find appreciation, sure. But but I like a whiskey like this. Just well, your nose, your nose gets to have most of the fun anyway. I mean, there, there's so much more that's derived from your your nose than your palate. So. Yeah, I, I would absolutely agree with you. I mean, it's one of those, it's one of those whiskeys. I mean, probably everyone watching has tasted their fair share of whiskey. And every so often, something that you know is is just, you know, a step above or or a step to the side. You know, it's something different that captures your attention. And and this is this is certainly one of them. Extremely vibrant. I mean, we're talking about a 30-year-old whiskey here certainly not a tired whiskey at all. I mean, at 48.2%, it is certainly strikes that mellow uh, aspect, but the sweet and fruity is there. I mean, the fruity, the, the tropical fruit you were talking about and beautifully floral. You know, I actually mentioned like a stone fruit, but I, but now you said tropical fruit. I'm, this is the power of suggestion. Now, now I get a lot of that too. There's a bit of pineapple, some mango, but, uh, well, I got I got to try this, man. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, that's got to get four of the four of mouth feel. Four of these to do. This is the best. This would be the best tasting ever. Oh man. Yeah, I know, right? It's the mouthfeel. Texture is, yeah, I think texture is brilliant right away. Like it's it's got good viscosity. And I love that because if you're wondering, well, why does texture matter? I mean, I'm sure some of you watching have strong preferences on this. Some of you might not even care. 
for me, it's just like when you have a really like sort of a thicker spirit, it coats the palate, makes for a longer finish. When you have something with the sort of the depth of flavor, I think that's an important, you know, attribute. And I love the sort of the velvety texture of this one. I feel like it's, I mean, it still has plenty of vibrancy. It has that, that pop. Um, the cut of the acidity is fantastic. But its age to me is coming through now in, in sort of the mid palette and on the finish. Get, I'm getting kind of, I don't know, like old library books or something like that. Like, you know, it's got, it's, it's a really interesting balance of uh, a slight earthiness or, or, uh, kind of oakiness, um, you know, like antique furniture, but but it still has all these waves of like really nice orchard fruits coming at me. Not yeah. so tropical on the palate for me now. Um, a bit more of like a pear, a green apple kind of flavors, which are fairly typical, I think, of the region. You know, I agree, Tom. I think you mentioned tropical on the nose and I picked it up too. And now having tasted it first, I didn't get the tropical fruits. I do get more orchard fruits as well. And, and going back to nosing it, that sort of the tropical notes has subsided. It's become a bit more, like, well, you're having a, an epiphany. Epiph Sorry if I'm, I mean, I'm, I just want to apologize in advance if I'm anchoring you. I don't, I don't, maybe I should just, you mm -hmm. know, is that all right? I mean, if I'm just blurting out nonsense, that's okay. <laughs> um, we, we may be miles apart, but I think that's the whole point of sharing a dram with somebody who can also appreciate the whiskey as you. For sure. Yeah. Um, I just don't, I don't want to limit your own discovery. That's all. <laughs> that's all. I'd say, listen, we all know once this stream ends, I'm going back to revisit everything. So, yeah, sure. But with, you know, I got to say, bourbon cask, you know, refill X bourbon barrel. So, bourbon barrels, a bit smaller, the more common hogsheads, which you find in Scotland. And I think the smaller the cask type, the more concentrated, the, the higher the ratio of wood to spirit over time. It's really imparted a lot of flavor. So, like right off the bat, the nose was banging. The, you know, the aroma was just explosive, fruity. It was a bit elegant, too. And you said floral. I think the palate is just like, it is even a step further. I'm, Again, this is where I, we sound biased because we're both part of the team, but I think it goes without saying this 1989 uh, Space Cider is just, it is just singing. And I love the bourbon barrel. I love it. I love it. You know, you get to really sort of get the essence of the, the whiskey, the spirit without any sort of external influences. Well, uh, yeah, a, I mean, I've said this to you before at other, at other opportunities, but you know, the, the bells and whistles that come along with certain styles of whiskey are great. They're flashy. They're fun. And, and a lot of us really enjoy those, but sometimes you want to like turn off the Motley crew and just kick back with some Coltrane, man. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, and, and that's, that's kind of what you're getting here. I mean, it's, it, it has certainly intensity, but those, those layers of flavor are really nuanced. They're really integrated. And man, the, the, again, I'm going back to the texture, the mouthfeel. It's just like, you know, I'm, I'm trying this again. And now, I, I'm just getting like honey, <laughs> like running down my throat. You know, it, it's it's really really beautiful. Yeah, the, the library. I mean, books, this is just the first one. So the, the library books call out again. I'm not. I know I'm bouncing off of you here, but there's like a musk to. There's a musky mm -hmm. undertone, mm -hmm. and I was trying to pinpoint that too. Sometimes you sort of attribute that to like an old worn leather, which will get in some older whiskeys. This is not that. I think the library books. It's not as astringent for me, but but right. there, there, it alludes to that. There's some there's some, there's an extra layer that I think you achieve with over time with maturation that is a bit more difficult to pinpoint. It's not something you get to experience often, um, and it just adds more depth and, and it's just fun to pick out. So I'm I'm all into it. That's a beautiful whiskey. Um, I don't know that we are ever getting another one of these casks uh, of sixty five. I have not heard anything. Um, so, so yeah, um, those of you who, uh, who have it and haven't opened it, I, I think, uh, I, I think Ben will agree that you're in for, in for a really beautiful treat here. Yeah. And everybody, I hope I'm not to just be redundant, but I hope you, you guys know, obviously we do these outturn tastings and now this is not an outturn tasting, but it was a tasting of our rarest casks. Um, we try to always stay honest about with our opinions on everything. You know, we have a lot of whiskeys that come and go. Um, I think you guys know from our videos in the past, we, we don't always just go about everything, but man, this thing is just absolutely, it's absolutely banging. And uh, there's, you don't have to 
sugarcoat that. 89, close distillery. 48.2%. I got to tell you, I, I, I would have, if I were tasting this blind, I would have guessed higher. There's a lot. I to, would too. You know? I would too. Yeah. There's a lot of verve there for, for something at 48%. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I didn't reduce. And quite frankly, I don't think I want to. I'm, I'm very happy with the, uh, the way this whiskey is treating me without water. But if, if, um, if one were to reduce, I, I'd probably not do more than a couple of drops, three, four drops tops, you know? I'm going to leave it as is too. I yeah. Have, I, have I mean, it, it's really probably. nice just like that. But yeah. yeah. So away we go. All right, away we go. Let's move on, guys. Um, I got this this one, next one here. So next one, we're going to really take a leap from the region of space side, and we're going to go to mini unboxing. This is 27.113. And, Tom, you showed a box, but I'll just bring this back into the focus here. You can see. Oh, yeah, give us the give us the, the full <laughs> four. I just kind of did like a little flash there. Look, we, the society, we really just let the whiskey do the talking, but I, I'm not going to lie. I do love the packaging that we've come up with for this second iteration of the Vaults collection. The first boxes were different. They opened from the top. Um, these are of much thicker wood. That is made from poplar, <laughs> just in case you were wondering. And uh, you open it up, obviously. So the official tasting notes are here. I know that the lighting and the contrast is hard to pick up, but... Let's, uh, let's pull this one out. So this is 27.113. What a song and dance. What, and what a name, too. This is, correct me if I'm wrong, I think this is the first uh, Vaults Collection Balling from Campbelltown we've had. That, yeah, that's come to the U.S. That's, that's right. Yeah, we did have a couple of other um, 27s that were released over the last couple of years, um, both of which were in sherry cask yeah so this is really cool um that uh i'll, I'll let you take it away yeah but, 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 but to your point yeah this, so this is as you can see on the bottle too and we'll have the description below uh 26 years old uh and refill x bourbon hogshead distilled in 1993 50.6 percent so yeah, going back to the point that it's a hogshead, we did have a couple black labels. We considered the vaults collection slightly different. Um, had a couple black labels from 27, both in cherry casks. Fantastic whiskeys. I was excited. As much as I really loved those, I was really excited when I first saw that this was going to be coming down the line because I think it's exciting. Kind of like what we had with the first one, I was, I was sharing my comments about being able to taste the spirit over time just without the sort of the without any major cask influences again different profile it's not better or worse it's just different and i haven't had those two in the cherry cast i just was excited for this sort of variation so because i will say we, we don't see a lot of campbelltown spirits of this age you know we're fortunate to have quite a few uh the society but they're usually sort of up to the high teens and so high it's teens yeah if you see if, if it's over 17 years old it's pretty it's pretty rare for us yeah yeah for sure yeah yeah so let's get into it. So again, bourbon cask on this one, it's a hogshead, Campbelltown, which with Campbelltown, we expect sort of a bit of salinity, yeah. some, some iodine. You have you have a reaction right away, Tom. Oh. What is it? You know, man, I, I got to be honest with you, Ben. You and I took a little trip, a little 24-hour uh, getaway with uh, with the, the spirits um, manager in the UK with Mr. Ewan Campbell, who's responsible for a lot of the fun stuff that comes out. So the three of us, Hopped in the car, drove to Campbelltown, had a smashing good time for sure. And it just, I mean, kind of tr transportational or, or transportive. I don't know if that's a word, but I'll, I'll use it anyway. I mean, it just, it, it, the freshness brings me back there, you know? Um, and, uh, oh God, that was a glorious day full of really amazing whiskey. And this, yeah. This just makes me, you know, recall it very, very fondly. Um, so I don't know if you can. Twenty four hours in Campbelltown with, with some whiskey nerds is about as uh, <laughs> as you have been in Vegas for twenty four hours. I still feel sort of, <laughs> and, you know, <laughs> the hangover has come back. I'm like, oh yeah, I remember. If that. I if I do recall, actually, you uh, you you went to that secret room at, at Cadenheads and and got some unsharied <laughs> number twenty seven. I, I did. Yeah, I'm into it. So. Yeah, right away. So it's interesting. I opened this bottle 
maybe a month ago, and we shared some with some other YouTubers in a blind tasting shootout. And I have to tell you, having allowed the spirit in the bottle to just breathe a little bit, it's a night and day difference. At first, it was very compact, very tight, and I would have missed it. I think it was mistook for a whiskey that would probably be younger. This is much more mature, much more complex, and I love the depth, that, that sort of the minerality with a bit of malty sweetness and a bit of sort of orchard fruits, but that that funky, you know, sort of medicinal uh, Campbelltown influence is really there from the spirit. And I love that. Oh. Man, this is tremendous. This is a really, really, really beautiful mold. Stream for a moment because I. Uh, oh, that's okay. I mean, I can, I can take it, dude. I mean, I'm not scared. I'll just. Uh, you know what? Get out of here, Ben. <laughs> I, I love the sort of the industrial like nature of the spirit. Like, sorry, I, I, have you tasted it yet? I just want to have. I haven't tasted it yet. It's on the nose. I mean, yeah. it, it's it's got this. This is going to sound weird, and I'm just waxing whatever, but kind of like a serene ruggedness to it like it it has you know i'm thinking about like the rocks that you know that you climb over like to get that really awesome shot of isla from Campbelltown, and and things like that and and it's all in there um but so beautifully integrated in in those aromas it, it's it's quite something it's a really gorgeous nose now i've heard from a lot of people my my personal database of tasting unpeated Springbank is fairly limited because I'm a sherry freak at heart. Um, but uh, oh, you are. So the truth comes out. Uh, yes, yeah. Time for a confession. Time for a, a Christmas tree confession here. Um, sure, I love all my bells and whistles in one glass. So give me peated sherry, and I am like a, a pig in Christmas Christmas pudding. There you go. Oh. Uh, yeah, I've come to appreciate it all at this stage and being with the, you know, with the society. It's the exposure we've had is, is tremendous. Mm. And, and this was very different from the one before it. There's so much, it's, there's such a vibrancy to it. The, the, the duality of the vibrancy of the spirit, it's just, there's such like a strong personality, but such maturity yeah. too, you know? Um, well, what I started to say before I went on a tangent was, you know, I've heard from so many um, really, you know, experienced whiskey lovers and collectors and, and many, many of them say the same thing, that, that there is there is nothing like aged, unsherried Springbank out there. Yeah. And quite frankly, I haven't tasted enough of it to say I agree or disagree or whatever. Um, but I mean, this certainly is, is a very, very good case for that. Yeah. Um, 93 distillate. Uh, and it, it's one that to me, it, it sort of harkens to an, an old era, you know, I would, or perhaps the distillery hasn't evolved that much. I would say too, it's sort of a very traditional working distillery. Um, but it's just the spirit. It's just, it's different than what you see out there. And that's what I appreciate about, uh, appreciate about this one. It's got a different level of depth. Th this one has a bit more of that worn leather sort of note that I was, yes, uh, you know, comparing the first one to, but that's there and I love that. Um, and what's cool about this distillery is it's still very much a family operation in, in, a, in a time of industrial, you know, corporate takeover, you know, they've stayed true to their roots and, and I, think, uh, I think it shows. Yeah, the first two, both of these, I would say you know, neither are very like, monstrous in terms of character. I mean, they're both pretty elegant in their own way. This one, compared to the first one, History in a Glass, this one sort of takes it up a notch a little bit. It's just in terms of the vibrancy. Um, again, it's not better or worse, it's just different. Like, I, it's a bit punchier, I would say. I, I, think, I think there's more complexity in this, and that's probably due to where it comes from. Yeah. You know, I, I think that there is just an, an element to coastal whiskey that that adds several layers of, of complexity, usually. You know, it, is that whiskey be actually being aged at the distillery? Is it being shipped to, you know, inland to a mainland warehouse? Who knows? But, you know, this one, I think we're all, we're all pretty certain, spent its, its time there. Um, so, 
So uh, that that really comes through, and and I think that that maritime influence certainly is is transmitted to the whiskey in a way that gives it that you know that those four more levels I think compared to probably many space side drams. Uh, that's just kind of the the nature of of the uh, of the location. Man, that's so good. It's a, it's a, this is really amazing. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but no, no. what you were saying about the the elegance. I mean, these two are both very very elegant. Um, this one just I think I think this 27 has a bit more depth than the 65 does. Um, tasting side by side. Now, of course, we're not giving them the benefit of you know 45 minutes next to a roaring fire or whatever you know whatever yeah. the situation yeah. may be, but here with this fairly uh clinical exploration um i'd have to give the depth factor to to the 27 out of the out of the two that we've had so far yeah i, I think it's for me i don't all, with all due respect i don't know that i feel the same way i was really equally impressed i think with the first one just in terms of what was available but i do think the first one a lot of the flavor was more on the surface like it was right there in front of you I think this one requires to go a little bit deeper, if that makes sense. Sure. Yeah. Like, that. that I should say the first one we had, that was the first time that I've really tasted it. So mm -hmm. I think I want to go back there. And I, I want to just comment again, like on the second one, guys, it's very different from when I first opened the bottle. So if you have one of these at home or if you order one for yourself, I would just I cannot recommend this enough. Open the bottle, pour a dram, enjoy it, let it breathe a little bit in the bottle and then go back after a few days, maybe even a week. For me, it's night and day difference. I like it so much more. I enjoyed it the first time, but now I'm leaning towards the, the sort of the love. The, we're in the love phase right now. Wait, I've said the L word, I've said the L word. Yeah, this is, so, this is special stuff, man. Yeah. That's that's really, really nice. Thank you for sharing. Yeah, let's let's uh, let's move on. I know we're, well, we got two more, we're halfway there. And man, I, okay. I, I want to say too, like, Tom, Tom, we're recording this guys. Uh, Sort of in the middle of a work day, and it's been kind of a crazy day for us. And we start, we 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 started this video. We're thinking, wow, we got to really get in, in, in the zone here. I got to tell you, after the second whiskey, after the first two, I am like in an own different. I'm in the zone right now. Hey Ben, I'm in the zone. Don't I, worry I about it. Zone. All right, let's. Uh, I'm gonna let's, have one more sip of this number twenty-seven. Yeah, I think I will too. I will too. Because that is gorgeous, and I deserve it. All right. Both of these whiskeys, the first two, they're, oh, okay. I shouldn't, you know, may, maybe that depth comment was like, you know, out of turn. It's I, 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 Like you, this is my first time trying the 65.6. That's my gut reaction. I mean, it could be totally different, but I, I, I do really pick up on what you're saying there with the, the sort of upfront intensity of, of the uh, 65 versus the sort of mid palate finish intensity of the 27. I think everyone wants the gut, the gut reaction, I think what, what people would appreciate the most. And for everybody, all you viewers, right on, yeah, yeah. And, and no one expects us to be aligned on everything. That would be boring. So, so, um, all right, let's uh, let's move on. Tom, you got you have the next one. Let's pull it up. Oh, I do. Yeah. Okay. So this was, uh, as I mentioned at the top of the program, the uh, the whiskey that I unboxed. Um, see here. Oh boy, sorry. Uh, my camera work is not good. There you go. Uh, cask 95.39 Indian Summer in a Japanese garden. Now, if that doesn't sound zen, I don't know what does. Um, 38 years old. Holy moly. And, and I mean, remarkably, 53% alcohol. I mean, I, I don't really, I don't have a chemistry degree. I don't know how that happens. But the angels were lazy with this one, I guess. Um, that is remarkable. It's retained. Yeah, that. This was distilled um, on the fifteenth of January, nineteen eighty-two. Okay, I was I was just about to turn five. Ben, were you alive? Uh, no, I was not even oh, supposed to be so alive. Cute. My parents weren't even thinking about having kids at that point. <laughs> they weren't even married yet. So. Oh wow, that's amazing. Anyway, thirty-eight years old. Um, 477 bottles in the universe. Uh, and uh, yeah, so this is one that I unboxed in in um, September. And, you know, YouTube, guys. Check then it out. as now, 
a lot of rambling, but you know, anyway, uh, 95.39. So this is one, one of those whiskeys that yes, you do see some, some single malts from here, uh, from this distillery in, in the U S and I think the 16 years is fairly, um, you know, widely, uh, available and, it's mostly used for blends, historically mostly used for blends. So you get a little bit of the single malt, you get a lot of the blend. But when when this was created, there was nothing in, in the single malt realm. It was all going to blends. So th this is a, a whiskey that uh, was born well before any sort of notoriety of this distillery in the U.S. Um it is very, very much a Zen type experience. It is not like these two whiskeys that we just had, where it's like, you know, just like coming at you. There are really beautiful aromas. Well, I'm going to get into it because I haven't really tasted it. Yeah, let's get into it. And just one thing um, before I get into the, the nose. Um, 38 year old single cast whiskey. It's the oldest one we've released in, in the US in probably about 20 years. Yeah. Um, I know that there are 40 year old single malts. I've actually had one of them at uh, at Bon Accord in Glasgow. Um, like a hug from your mom. That's a great cask. 35 point whatever. Again, yeah. can't remember the number. <laughs> yeah, I remember that 35 one. point like 40 or something like that or 140. Like a hug from your mom. It's freaking amazing. Um, but uh, anyway. This this guy is you know almost forty years old. It's the oldest we've released in a long, long time. And uh, I'm just going to say this, Ben, thirty eight year old whiskey. You know, from a sales perspective, thirty eight year old whiskey, anywhere under a thousand dollars seems like an incredible value. Um, I think uh, I think this one represents tremendous value. Um, so. Interesting yeah, just it about, too, when you're talking about age, again, we, we talk about age a lot as being one factor of determining whiskey's quality, but but it's I, I do think it's fun to reminisce on what was the world like, or perhaps you don't might not even know because you weren't born yet. But nonetheless, the Scotch Malt Whiskey Society was founded in 1983, a year after the spirit was older. So this does predate right. it does predate the society. Yes. Yeah. Kind of an interesting little you know thought. But. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, Pip was still uh Pip was was still like fielding phone calls from all of his buddies looking to get a, yet another cask from distillery number one at this point. And, and he was just like, oh, you guys keep bugging me. I got to do something about this. Maybe make some money. <laughs> it's very woodsy, but it's like balsamic vinaigrette, like no. a, a glaze, um, a bit nutty. So, well, so this was aged for all 38 years in a refill sherry butt, which is basically unheard of. Um, and, uh, boy, what a, what a, a beautiful kind of whisk of flavor it Im imparts, um, or at least aromas, I should say, of that sort of sherry character that, that fairly, it's, it's a fairly thin veil. And I just wonder. Yeah, it, it allows that, that. That sort of light touch allows a lot of other elements to come through and coexist with with the sherry character. Um, you know, so you, so I, I'm certainly getting those flowers, the, the sort of damp, crunchy autumn leaves. That that balsamic mention you made. Yeah, you, you get that too. Almost like a kind of a light soy in the background. Yeah, yeah. Just a very exotic sort of yeah damp earth overtone. Yeah. Ooh, I mean, this is this is definitely um, like a thinker's whiskey, right? I mean, that's what I'm yeah. sitting here and like just just staring staring into the into the actual fire or Yule log like I have right now on the TV and just <sighs> thinking about stuff. <laughs> you know, that's that well, this is perfect for that kind of thing. First of all, what uh, yeah, the first two were to a degree, right? Like I was thinking, man, these are just so thought provoking. Then this one has. You, you call out the fact that it's a Zen name, it's a Zen spirit, you know, it, it does slow down time a little bit. And uh, <laughs> in the best way possible, nothing else really matters. 
you know, it's, it's, it's captivating. This is a different spirit from when I opened it in September. It does. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It actually has a lot more like sort of confectiony confectionery richness on the palate to me now. Um, a lot more cabinet spice. I mean, it, it's really, it's really kind of opened up quite a bit. And now granted, I don't know if you can see the level there. So, you know, after yeah. I had probably two or three more after that, after that broadcast ended, eh, you know, it was that kind of day. But so I was down about here and, and it stayed there until, uh, until I, I poured out a sample for you, Ben. It's an old world. And you know, that's, so that's what a, a, a sixth, a seventh of the bottle space uh that, that was there and and now the rest of that whiskey is is really different yeah which it's is super got, cool it's got a bit of um i think you mentioned rugged for the, the previous whiskey you used the term rugged to describe so this rugged coastal whiskey mm -hmm. so had this is more rugged a very rugged woodsy thinking of sort of like a fall it's interesting because indian summer in a japanese garden it does evoke a very sort of autumnal or sort of early winter profile for me i'm thinking walking through the woods well it certainly has those autumnal vibes for yeah. sure yeah. yeah i mean the, a few leaves are still like clinging to the trees yeah. and, and and that sort of thing oh yeah um you know the i think when i first tried it it kind of evoked this imagery of of like walking through a, an apple orchard you know with like leaves crunching beneath my feet like that kind of thing um and and now I mean I certainly still get a lot of those things on the nose. The palate now has has I think uh, picked up quite a bit of intensity, um, a lot of richness, really nice cabinet spice, a little bit of nuttiness too, like that oloroso nuttiness. Yeah, that you can sometimes get. I don't know if you pick up on that at all, but yeah, I mean, like just, just almond type. And just a point of clarity for, for you guys watching it. I mean, it's a refill sherry, but that's the gas type. 38 years in a refill sherry, but and typically you, you would assume that when a whiskey spends that, a spirit spends that much time in a sherry cast, it extracts a lot of the sherry flavor. This one to me, I feel like it's one of the most balanced sherry mature whiskeys that, that I've seen in a while, or I've tasted in a while, I should say, because it, it's not overridden by the sherry, you know, sort of overtones. It's there, it's unmistakably be a sherry cask. Color, you know, sometimes matches up. You can kind of see it's sort of like a deep amber. It's not a sort of a black as night type of sherry cask whiskey where it's just really yeah. all sherry up front. But yeah, the, the spice and the nuttiness of the Rosa sherry is absolutely there, but it just works in so well with the, with the fruitiness of the spirits. Right. All the fruit still comes through, though. It's, you know, it's not muted by a heavy handed, you know, type type uh, cask. And probably a few iterations of managers for the society watched over this cask, you know, and, and, and they knew, they, they knew that this cask was, was used a certain amount of times and, you know, was, was just interacting with the spirit in a certain way that would allow this sort of exceptional age to happen, you know, and, and you, you can't just forget about a cask and throw it in the corner. You have to check in on it and you have to taste and make sure that it's it's developing you know the way you anticipated and clearly i mean i can't imagine like ewan's delight when he stuck the the, the barrel thief in this thing and tasted this for the first time yeah that's i mean it's really 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 nice i mean <clears throat> it's not quite as zen on the palate as i remember it from last time but it's actually Starting to it's starting to delve into the hedonistic here, you know. We we're, we've really reached a point where it's leaving very little to be desired. I, I suppose if you're really into sort of peated whiskeys, this is not a peated whiskey. Maybe maybe you, you you want a bit of that, but beyond that, it, it's just got everything. The balance again. The, I don't want to go on about this, but the balance between the spirit and the wood over 38 years is 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 a. Uh, well, it's just it's very harmonious. The fact that it's retained fifty three percent. Now I will tell you, I haven't added water to either of these. Did you add any water to the second one? Right. So I, I filled. No, man. Uh, Tis the season to drink at cask strength. Well, it's funny because fifty three percent. I would have guessed this was maybe 
uh, you know, with older whiskey, sometimes it's more, they become more approachable at such a high strength. It's amazing it's retained 53% after 38 years. What was it going on? It's treating me just fine. It's treating me yeah. just fine. I am going to just, uh, I, I don't think it needs it, but before we move on the last one. Yeah, you're going you're gonna to throw that drops just to. Let me dust off my, my water bottle, my water dropper here. I've added a very small amount of water, and it for me, it brings out, I'll tell you right now, a bit more of that worn leather aroma, you know, I think is a, it's interesting. I added very few drops. More earthy, less fruity, which is interesting because usually when I add water, I get more fruit tones as, I, as opposed to others. But heavy perfume. There, yeah, there is there is a, some kind of red fruit on the nose now that was not there before. It could be the first two casks stocking. I don't know. But it's very herbaceous. Man, this is they're just ooh, what a life, man. I, I, this is, I just feel so lucky to be drinking all these all of a sudden. Yeah, I, I'm, lucky is a good word to 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 describe it. For yeah. sure. Yeah. Um, you know, we're we're getting to taste some of the oldest whiskey out there and 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 easily the coolest whiskey so you know. whereas this second one you know transport you to campbelltown this one and i and i and i second that i think that's so cool about whiskey how it can transport your mind and trigger memories mm -hmm. this one I, I it doesn't take me anywhere other than where i am except no it doesn't take me anywhere specific except for someplace different than where i am now like it's transportive but i don't know where i'm going you lost me, dude. <laughs> sure, sure. My point is, I, it, there's no specific place or location that I I envision being. Now, I should say the name of this is Indian Summer in a Japanese Garden. So for anyone who's been into Japan or been to India during the summer, maybe you can put equate the two. Having not been either of those places, it, it, I don't compute this whiskey with a specific place, but it does transport me out of my current environment. Like for a moment, I taste, that's what I meant to say is, I forget that I'm sitting here in my office with a bunch of LED lights <laughs> blaring out at me because it's just so captivating. Does that make sense a bit? Like, it makes just, sense. And and yeah. and I just want to get back into this glass and find more flavors because they just keep coming. Yeah. So it's like it just makes me want to take another sip. It's very drinkable. Very, very drinkable. Yeah. Um, because there is there is just there's a lot more in there that I haven't gotten to yet, you know? Um, so that's a, that's a pretty, pretty cool aspect of this particular whiskey. All right, let's move on. So, you know, I, I got to finish this one to be honest. I just I can't mm. let it go. Yeah, Ben, it's, it's not a bad gig we got, huh? I got to tell you, these first three are also different. We had the, the space side, the, the 30 year old bourbon cat bourbon barrel, very perfumey, very floral, fruity up front. Yep. I was thinking, we don't have to do a full recap. Then we went to the coast of Campbelltown with that very sort of medicinal, you know, iodine-esque spirit. And this is just so different. Very, very different, you know. So. I mean, it's a, it's, it's, a, it's a beautifully um, imparted measure of sherry on, on an already very well-textured, sort of orchard fruit forward dram and it's a really nice marriage of those two profiles yeah uh let's go to the last one so last one is one you might be more familiar with when i say familiar with i think it was actually the, of the four it was the first to be released it is cask 24.139 beauty beyond skin deep and so interestingly we have the second uh version of our vault collection boxes here which are really heavy by the way i just want to call out the fact that these are super heavy um but the label on this one is actually from the previous version so it's a bit of a relic already you know collectors one. collector's edition uh, collector <laughs> <laughs> guys all society whiskeys for drinking by the way it's just uh <laughs> yeah, I'm talking about the box man you can't control what you do with it but what we just asked just this was too stupid to not be enjoyed um but this is actually from the yeah so from the previous label, Beauty Beyond Skin Deep here it is, and so this was sort of a transitional period when we had the new packet, the new boxes 
not the vaults collection, but this is probably the last run of the, the old one. So bottled in 2019, I think we we first released it here in the US beginning of this year, right? Yeah, February of 2020. Yeah. And we got quite a few casts, excuse me, quite a few bottles. This was a refill sherry butt. So 1989 refill sherry butt, um, bottle at 46.9%. So distillery 24, one of the most uh, difficult to come by in terms of actual casks. Uh, nowadays, probably one of, arguably one of the most popular and sought after distilleries in the world. And so I think the opportunity to have a, a cask from the distillery is, is always special. Uh, a 30 year old sherry butt unadulterated is, is pretty unique, I, I would say. And uh, let's get into it. We're, I mean, we're here to, to judge all the whiskey by the whiskeys. But <laughs> you think, what, I don't know what's on your mind, Tom, but something's going Dude, it's a ridiculous nose. I mean, oh, you, you've already gone into it. Yeah. I, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm like holding it, I'm swirling it, and, and you're talking, and, and I'm just sitting here and uh, really wanting to nose it. Yeah, similar in color to the the previous thirty eight year old cherry venture whiskey. Uh, a couple maybe, shades darker. A little I darker. Think. Yeah. Maybe yeah. A, maybe a shade darker. Yeah, yeah. But uh, fairly similar. Okay, I hit. It's wow. I want to. By the way, when we finish this, I want to just go back and do it all again. I want to just keep doing it. <laughs> I think that's I'm gonna oh, yeah, This is just the first take. I mean, so we're gonna to have to refill all of our glasses and do this all again. Yeah, guys, just ignore this video. We're gonna yeah. we'll upload this, but we'll do it again. It's the right thing to do, really. Yeah. I can't remember the name of the first, uh, the number of the first Macallan that we uh, that we released. So. Well, hopefully by now, someone in the comments below will have answered that question. Uh, they can use the power of the interwebs if they'd like, but but Beauty Beyond Skin Deep. So I love the name, by the way. Just be, be, yeah. okay, before even tasting the whiskey, I'm mean, trying to judge it before, by the spirit alone, but the, the name is just really intriguing, you know. So, I mean, for me, it's 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 tough because we just had another older sherry matured whiskey. It's different than this. It's a bit more perfumey, I think, on the nose. It has that sort oh, yeah. of dark sort of raisin um, herbal sort of clove. And then it's in the, the traditional baking spice notes you pick up in a sherry matured whiskey, such as cinnamon uh, or nutmeg. It has that sort of almond nuttiness beneath it as well. So it's kind of what you would expect from a sherry matured whiskey, but it has this sort of perfumey note that, again, just from comparative purposes sort of harkens back to the first one we had which was a bit floral and perfumey there's some of that going on too have you ever had crepes flambe no i haven't but i okay so like uh, no. so I, I i went to all of these like new year's parties with with these friends and the, at, at the end of the night like right before the clock struck midnight the big dessert was crepes flambe so you spend hours making these beautiful crepes and you roll them up and um, you warm them. And then right before you're serving them, you pour Grand Meunier all over them and then light it up. And it's just like, and you know, it's a big spectacle and you have like this sort of burnt Grand Meunier with the, the really sweet kind of crepe. And um, that's, that's what I'm getting in this glass. It's like all of all of those things. It's like it's like the the sort of delicate sweetness of the crepe itself. It's like the burnt orange peel that you would get from lighting Grand Meunier on fire. Yeah. Uh, said crepes, and like that's just like the first initial nose. Yeah, I haven't I haven't tasted. I mean, I've tasted it before, but I haven't today. And just on the nose alone, it's definitely a dessert whiskey. You just just nosing it's, it. Yeah, it's it has a lot. It has a lot more. Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Let's just say intensity on the nose. Yeah. yeah. Um, I mean, sweet. It's funny because I, I, my default descriptor would be say it's sweeter than the previous, but it's not overly sweet. You know what I mean? It does have a dry sort of profile. It's very nutty, but it's for me the the previous sherry mature whiskey we just had whiskey number three, um, the ninety five. That was more of like an outdoor woodsy type of, uh, we said fall or winter. I don't know. I mean, it just evoked being outdoors. This is more of a um, a post dinner dram. Uh, again, not to say that any of them can't, the others can't be too, but you know what I mean? It just evokes 
hearing you talk about flambe, I'm like, wow, this is, I would love to just pair this with any dessert. This is it. I encourage everyone at home to learn how to make crepes and then light them on fire with Grand Marnier and just smell what's going on there. It's the same thing. I mean, it's a, it's a very, very similar. And that's, a, those are a lot of elements going on in that, in that, you know, memory that I have. But, uh, but yeah, they're, they're all there. And then some, I mean, I'm just getting to like the next layers of it now. Yeah, definitely a lot of caramelized, sort of like caramelized sugars, but losing the initial. Yeah, this is a caramelized. Bit yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, may, maybe a little bit of tobacco smoke, very, very subtle. But there, there is sort of a sort of a smoky note, or, or more. It's back to it. we'll, we'll you talk. have you have all those beautiful kind of earthy you know, like old school elements that one might expect from a, a, a central space side distillery of, you know, of this sort of provenance. Cheers. This is special stuff, Ben. Thanks for sharing. Mm. I'm done, you know, like it's just, it's just, it's so hard once you go here, it's so hard to go back to civilization. Again, <laughs> again. That, there's more of that worn leather note for me. Integration, but, integration, integration. Yeah. I mean, that is, that is a, the silkiest whiskey I've, I've had in the last five years. Yeah. I the, mean, and that's all I can remember back. It's five years, so you know. There's a lot um, that happens from the from the very first sip. Once the spirit touches the front of the palate to the back, like there's a lot that it evolves. Both it's it's sweeter. Yes, you have a bit more confectionery sugar. I mentioned like caramelized sugar. You got a bit of that. It becomes a bit more earthier for me. And in between, it becomes sort of a, there's an orchard fruit sort of note that overtakes it all. Anyway, the point is the of evolution from the moment you sip it to, towards the finish is just it's pr pretty profound in the right ways. What is the ABV on this thing? I forget. So I think of the, all the four, it's the lowest, and then it's 46.9%. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's some beautiful spice. Yeah. Yeah. Really, really nice. 30 year old whiskey. Is I mean, it, it is just like ace. I mean, you, yeah. you feel whiskey travel, you know, kind of move over your palate. Uh, in different ways, you know. Sometimes it attacks the side. Sometimes it it, it really just kind of uh, overpowers the tongue and the cheeks and everything. This is just kind of a very well packaged core that that really sticks to the middle of of the palate, and uh, I think that's just. I mean, that has to be impeccable balance. There are all these different flavors that are happening around you, but. You don't feel, you know, the heat of, of, of the alcohol. You don't feel any kind of burn or anything. It's just really soft and, and just beautifully, beautifully, like, experienced throughout the, the entry, the mid-palate, the finish. Yeah, and, and again, if, if you guys are looking for sort of a big sherry impact, um, this isn't – it's, it's not there. It's no. not. It's not what this is. I think no. that's important distinction, you know, within sort of classifying different sherry mature whiskeys is what's a sh the term sherry bomb is thrown out, where it's all or also sherry up front, and then you have this sort of the spirit beneath it. This is just so well balanced, like the previous one too. Two two great examples of sherry refill sherry buds that offer yes, I know the, the, the old roasted sherry undertone. It's nutty. It's spicy. It's herbaceous. But also, it's you had this fruity, fruity spirit. And in this case, I think a very fruity spirit that has just simply mellowed out over time, you know. And, and it's just it's just such a wonderful, wonderful harmony. It, it just it's it reminds me of why I'm here to begin with, or why we're into. I'll speak for myself. Why I'm into whiskey. Um, the only the only uh, the, the tough part of this all is I just wonder like where do I go from here because I, it's hard to go back. Yeah. I can't really imagine wanting more than this. It reminds me why I do YouTube because other or, or whatever this is. 
uh, because otherwise I wouldn't have been allowed to taste this tremendous spirit. <laughs> so <laughs> I am eternally grateful to be looking into this camera on top of my laptop. Um, That's why you and, keep thanking me. I was like, why? Given the, uh, given the opportunity to put this stuff to my lips, it's, uh, I mean, I had a thought, I had a thought, but then I, I deviated. Um, it will come back to me because it was a pretty good one. Yeah. But in, in any case, um, ah, yes. All right. So for me, yeah, this is not a sherry bomb. You're absolutely right. And and for people looking for a sherry bomb, look somewhere else. I mean, we have we have some cool stuff coming out. I guess when this airs in about an hour from now or so. That's uh, we'll post it on Friday, Friday morning. Oh, okay. So in a few days from now. Um, but uh, but anyway. Um, we, there are sherry bombs out there. This is not that. I mean, this is a, a very, very sophisticated um, glass of whiskey. But the big difference between this one and the last refill sherry butt is the finish. Mm. The finish on this just keeps going. I mean, we're talking, we're, we're, we're interacting with each other and the audience that will be at one point, but if you're just sitting there by yourself and you're tasting this and you swallow it, um, you're still getting things. You're still getting flavors 30, 45 seconds later, you know, oh, that's, that's a special whiskey. That's a special whiskey to me. The, the, the sort of this dark cocoa, old leather, uh, Harmony that's just taking place is just fantastic. Yeah, listen, I mean, I, I guess just to close it out, this is the fourth one. That's the last one. I, I'm really bummed it's over. <laughs> I wish we had a few more to go through. I, I'm good for like three more vaults collection samples, by the yeah. way. I mean, I, but guys, just, just at the end of the day, pointing the vaults collection is a celebration of the rarest cast that we have. Um, and the society is all about, you know, offering whiskey to members for drinking. That's the whole point. The opportunity to experience a whiskey like this is pretty rare, as is the cask itself. Um, if you're, if you have a bottle at home of one of these, comment below. Let us know what you think. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, if you're considering order one, ordering one for yourself or a gift for the holidays, obviously it's, it's about as special as it gets if, if, if either you or uh, your loved one that enjoys whiskey. I think all these are great. They're all unique. And what I love about single cask whiskey is that they all, they're all snapshot in time, right? A single cask is bo you, we're bottling at a specific time. There's no two, no two are ever alike. We'll never have any whiskeys exactly like this. And it's just the snapshot was taken a long time ago. Well, the snapshot, be, the photo began a long time ago. We're talking the 80s, and we had one that was a 93, you know, right? But but every other one was in the 80s for that, right? 89, 89, 93, 82, 89. Anyway, it's just it's just a bygone era on display here. Any of these, I think, are fantastic. I think my how time flies. <laughs> yeah. I think they're all they're all amazing for different reasons. Uh, you know, again, we had a couple sherry matured whiskeys, but both different. This this last one being a bit maybe a bit sweeter, more dessert like than sort of the rugged earthy one before it. We had a, we had a coastal Campbelltown, which is fantastic. And we really had, I think, and, and I, personally, the first one that we had, uh, the bourbon barrel space side. It'll be tricky to go back because I think in, in the profile is a little lightest. But I don't know of any really sort of lighter profile with bourbon mature whiskeys that have that level of just excitement that, that we that I've seen. It's been a while since I've, I've had anything like that. And I'm really intrigued by that too. So I don't know about you. Personally, I, I don't have there's no standout for me, but but I, I'm curious to hear what you think. I mean, I'm kind of hoping you'll send me more of that number 27. Yes. Deal. Yeah. That, that would be really cool. Okay, um, deal. That that whiskey really resonated with me. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I absolutely love Sherry. Maybe I'm being, I, I don't know. Maybe I'm just, uh, just being too reminiscent of, of a really cool trip, you know, when we could actually take really cool trips. Yeah. Um, because the, the flavors on the last two are certainly in my wheelhouse for sure. But there's something about that 27 that that's just a bit sentimental and, uh, and and really, I guess maybe the the kind of complexity that, that I'm looking for right now, you know, it, all of our palettes are evolving and changing all the time. And and what we want to experience is hopefully evolving and changing. Um, and right now, that's kind of where I want to be, you know. Yeah.
Yeah. Um, yeah. But, uh, but man, it's, it's tough. It, it, there are no favorites. I think it's just the best thing for right now type thing. And, and, and all of them could certainly come into play, you know, in the next several weeks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a, a very special opportunity to be able to taste these. So thank you, Ben, for having me on the channel. Thanks for being here, Tom. Yeah, really Thanks for tuning in. If you have any questions, drop a comment below. Uh, shoot us a note at info at smwsa.com. Um, and we'll get back to you. So yeah, four extraordinary whiskeys. Really, really fortunate to, to taste these. We don't have to keep going on about that. We hope you enjoy them, have a chance to enjoy them. Uh, if you're on the fence about it, I hope this video, you know, us sharing our, our honest reaction, I guess, to, to all these will help steer you in the right direction to, to choosing the one that's right for your palate. So anyway, we'll uh, sign off. Sanjava. Yeah, Thank and uh, to all the members out there, happy holidays. May you be very, very happy and very, very safe. And hopefully we can shake hands and share drams in 2021. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.